Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. We're continuing my free course here on Node.js and JavaScript for beginners. And in this video, we're going to look at adding to arrays. So, so far we've seen how to create arrays, including two-dimensional arrays, but we've initialized them when we declare the variable. We've been declaring them and initializing them with data at the same time. But what we can also do is we can add data to existing arrays, or we can even just declare an empty array and then add data to that. So first of all, let's take a look at what we would do for one-dimensional arrays, in other words, lists, uh, because that's simpler than two-dimensional arrays. So let's declare a, an empty array. Let's say let fruit equal, and I'll use square brackets here to indicate just an empty array. So one way that you can add items to an array is just to use an index to set items. And the index that you use is the first index that's off the end of the array. So if I were to re refer to fruits zero here, because this has no items in it, fruit zero, which would normally be the first item, doesn't exist. It's off the end of the array already, but I can actually set that item to expand the array. So if I write fruits zero equals orange, that will actually expand the array and add one item to it. Let's do, let's do console.log fruits zero to check that it works. And this is well supported by all browsers and as far as I know, all major browsers and has been for a long time. So here I'm going to run my programs, check that I'm in the right place. Yep. So let's do node and adding to arrays.js and we can see we've got orange in that array. So let's do another one. What's, what's the first item? What's the index of the first item that would now be off the end of the array now, um, that would now be one. So we've got an array here with one item in it. So the maximum index that we can use to access items is zero. So if I pick the next index, it's just off the end of the array, one, I can set that to expand the array. Let's write fruits one equals apple. And we could also output the length of the array, console.log fruits dot length and if we try this then we find we've got an array with two items in it we're displaying only the first one let's display the second as well second item which is at index one there we go we've got orange and apple now this can seem counterintuitive if you've been programming in other languages, because many programming languages would not let you do this. JavaScript is in many ways unusually flexible. For example, if you did this in a C program or a Java program, it would cause problems. You can't access or set elements of an array, usually that are off the end of the array. But JavaScript lets you do it. However, there is another way of doing this that is more similar to how you would usually do this in in probably most other programming languages. And that's to use a method called push. So a, a method is a subroutine. It's a kind of function. It's a collection of code that is associated with an object. And an ar array here is, is, an, is what we call an object in JavaScript. So you don't, you don't really need to know that yet. We're going to cover that later. But um, what, you need, what you need to know is just how you actually do this. So um, let's write fruits, and we use the, me the method called push. Um, so push adds items to the end of an array. Let's do push and banana. And then I'm going to actually move this code up so we can get the new length of the array. And let's, uh, let's also output this new item, which is now going to be at index two. So if we take a look at this, then we see we've now got banana in the array. Why is it called push? Well, we're kind of thinking of an array here as, a, it's kind of a bit like a, a stack. A stack data structure 
is um, is a data structure where the first item that we rem- we remove is the last one we added. So um, if you think of like a stack of cards, a deck of cards, you can put a card on the top and you can take it off again. In um, computer programming, those kinds of data structures are called stacks. Now an array is not a stack because, you know, we can read items from anywhere within the array. But this terminology, push, is used with stacks and it indicates basically um, pushing something onto the top of a stack. In this case, we've got an array. If you think of it like a deck of cards, we're like putting a card on, on top of the cards, like pushing a card on top of the cards. It's a bit like that. I don't know if that information really helps, but we, we talk about pushing things onto the end of the array. And that terminal, terminology, I think, really comes from stack data structures. Okay, um, so we can iterate through our array as well, of course. We could do uh, we could do that in various ways. So um, let's maybe just use a for loop, a conventional for loop, which is we've already seen that in the course. So let's do for uh, let i equals zero i less than fruits dot length i plus plus and we're going to see other ways of um, iterating through arrays later on in the course and we'll access fruits i because this is not necessarily the most convenient way to do this let's also output a blank line to kind of create some separation in in our output so if we look at the output now here we can see we're iterating through the array and you want to become really fluent with creating arrays, adding items to them and iterating through them with a for loop. It's something you can just learn through practice. So how would we deal with a a two-dimensional array? Well with a two-dimensional array the elements are themselves arrays. So let's create a two-dimensional array. Now we need kind of a table of something. So let's maybe write let animals equal um, and again I'll set it equal to an empty array. Now there are various subtleties around this and various things you can do but um, for our purposes here this this will be good to get us started. So we could add to the end of animals for example by using push and what do we want to add? We want to add arrays. So let's say um, animals dot push and let's add the first row of this table. Now the thing that we want to push is itself going to be an array. So to denote an array we write square brackets like this and in there we can add some a list of animals. Let's write dog, cat and uh, mouse. And that will add items to our two-dimensional array and we could iterate through it using the technique that we saw in a previous tutorial. Or for now, I could just iterate through the outer array. Let's maybe put a blank line, again, console.log, and then do for let i equal zero, i less than animals.length now, i plus plus. And we'll iterate through this array and output the elements in it, just, just as we did up here. And notice this i the scope of it, in other words, the region where it exists, is just here. Outside of that, it doesn't exist. And that's why we can create a new I here. So I'm going to output animals I. And now we're, we're outputting one row at a time. We've only got one row in it so far. So if I run this program, then we can see we've got... Um, an array of animals coming out because the the array the I, sorry the elements in this animals array are themselves arrays and we can of course add more to it so let's have another row in the table and this time I'll put animals that um, that I'm not familiar with uh, because we don't really have them in England like tiger well I am familiar with them um, we <laughs> we just don't have them roaming about okay um, lion and elephant kind of be nice if there were elephants in England, probably a bit destructive, but anyway. Okay, so let's run this. 
and we can see down here if you can see this we've got two rows now um the second row is my sort of tropical type or animals that that we don't have in england okay so um that's it for this video i'm going to give you an exercise in the next video uh, which you can do to kind of improve your fluency with this if you want. The main thing to do though is just practice it and uh, you know practice typing it out. Probably if you're a complete beginner inevitably you'll make mistakes but that's the point of practice. You'll correct your mistakes and um, eventually you'll stop making them so much. Okay so until next time happy coding.